The hard thing isn't dreaming big. The hard thing is waking up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat when the dream turns into a nightmare. Ben Horowitz While most business books focus on how to stay out of trouble, or how to manage a group of people in a growing business, or practical stuff like profit and loss statements, few books talk about how to motivate teams when a business is struggling, or when your industry has flopped, or when you have to lay off friends and executives. That's what the hard thing about hard things talks about. Advice and wisdom from Horowitz's time as the leader of A16Z and SoundCloud to help when times are at their roughest. As I was reading the book, I thought about how many of these lessons don't just apply to CEOs, but to anyone running their own business or side hustle. Here are five lessons I pulled from the book that hopefully will help you through the hard things. The first, being scared. Being scared doesn't mean you're gutless. In fact, the hero and the coward both feel the same fear when faced with a difficult decision. In the story of David and Goliath, there is a reason that we remember David and not one of his fellow Israelites. None of them stepped up to fight the giant Goliath. None of them slew him, and none of them saved the army from becoming slaves. There is no doubt that David felt fear. He is remembered, and his name has never been forgotten, though, because he stepped up anyway. In the business world, you will undoubtedly face a scary situation from time to time. A huge purchase of inventory, a large loan, firing some of your staff, or venturing into a new product or industry. Successful CEOs and entrepreneurs will not back down from these intimidating situations. They will rise to the occasion and react in the best possible way, despite their fear. Number two, there are no shortcuts to knowledge. According to the author, the only thing that prepares you for running a company is running a company. Unfortunately, no amount of business books, college degrees, or seminars will prepare you to run a company, especially during the hard times. You simply have to learn by doing it. In fact, often taking shortcuts is even worse than not knowing anything. By taking shortcuts, you are depending on conventional wisdom and things that have been done before. Approaching a problem with no knowledge of it allows you to think through it in a new way. Often, this ability to create a fresh approach works out well as you have to think deeply and critically about the issue at hand. Number three, when things go wrong. Things will go wrong. Let's get that out there first. No matter how good of a CEO or entrepreneur, no matter how good your business is, things will go wrong. The first thing to do when things go wrong is to tell the truth. Too often, CEOs and leaders feel the need to lie and cover things up from employees and subordinates. When you lie, you ruin trust. Trust is so important in a company to build a loyal team rather than one just working for a paycheck. By telling the truth, you also get more eyes, ears, and brains working on the solution to a problem. This often leads to a faster resolution and the best possible solution. Bad news will get out, and it's better that it comes from your mouth. When things go wrong, it's also important to realize that it's likely something that you are doing, or not doing, that caused the issue. Just like covering up the truth, too often we blame outside events for problems or issues within ourselves or companies. You can't fix the things that happen outside of your company, but you can definitely stop harmful actions or start practices to keep issues from repeating on the inside. Number four, focus on what really matters. As a business owner, CEO, or entrepreneur, it is easy to get distracted with the millions of things that draw your attention on a daily basis. You could easily spend all day answering emails, working on issues that your team should be solving, or in worthless meetings. Your time is valuable, more valuable than any other member of your team. It is your job to focus on making the best moves for the company at any given time. These large-scale, sweeping decisions are the difficult ones that you make now but won't pay off until later. It's your job to make these decisions, and especially when you have to pick between the least bad option, can define the success or failure of your entire venture. And lastly, don't tell people what to do. 
Too often, CEOs feel the need to micromanage every task that happens in their company. This might work in a startup where you have 5 to 10 employees and you have your hands in everything that is happening. At some point, though, the goal is more important than the process. If you tell your sales team to make 100 calls that day, you've told them what to do. But instead, if you tell them the goal is to make 10 sales today, you give them the power to decide how they want to sell. Maybe they want to go door to door. Maybe they have a network to lean on. It's their choice, but they have a clear goal. By giving people a goal to accomplish, rather than a set of tasks, you give them ownership and allow them to grow and succeed individually in a way that benefits everyone. Remember, the hard thing isn't dreaming big. The hard thing is waking up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat when the dream turns into a nightmare. The Hard Thing About Hard Things was a refreshing break from most business books, especially since I read it while dealing with problems in my own business ventures. While no one can tell you exactly how to deal with the hard things, this book at least presents actionable advice. Do you have a book, idea, or saying that you'd like to see us animate? Leave your comments down below, along with a like and a subscription to the channel, and we'll do our best to make sure your suggestion turns into our next video.